Okay, in this video, we're gonna do number one from the 2022 Calc A, B, and B, C exams. So they both had the same first question and it's kind of like a working with a rate of change problem. So let's take a look at what it says. Uh, from 5 a.m. to 10 a.m., the rate at which the vehicles, the rate at which vehicles arrive at a certain toll plaza is given by A of T, which is 450 root sine of 0.62 T, where T is the number of hours after 5 a.m. and A of T is measured in vehicles per hour. Traffic is flowing smoothly at 5 a.m. with no vehicles waiting in line. All right, so for part A, we want to write, but do not evaluate. That's really interesting to me. An integral expression that gives the total number of vehicles that arrive at the toll plaza between basically t equals one and t equals five. All right, so we are trying to figure out uh, the total number of vehicles that arrive. That would be uh, an integral of the rate at which they're arriving. And it turns out in the problem, the rate at which the vehicles arrive is a of t. So for this problem, all we really want to do is the integral from 1 to 5 of a of t dt. And since the function is named a of t, you don't need to write 450 root sine of 0.62 t. We don't have to evaluate this. That's literally all we needed to do. I feel like that's a problem where they try to get you to understand how the problem is working. Um, so let's move on to part B and see what we're now going to do with this idea. All right, part B. Find the average value of the rate in vehicles per hour at which vehicles arrive at the toll plaza from t equals 1 to t equals 5. So the average value of the rate. So average value in general is integral over interval. So we're going to do the integral of the function that gives us the rate divided by the interval on which we're searching, which is from 1 to 5. All right, so that's going to be the integral from 1 to 5 of a of t dt, which I guess is why you didn't have to do it in part a, because we're just gonna calculate some stuff here anyway, um, divided by five minus one. So the integral of the rate over the interval, which is five minus one. This is a calculator question. So um, we're gonna get our answer by storing a of t. Maybe you don't store it, maybe you just use it. It's up to you. I always store functions, storing a of t, and then uh, doing the integral over the interval, I got 375.5. 537, um, and that's going to be the units for the average value of a function are the same as the units of the function. So A of t is measured in vehicles per hour. So the average value of A of t is also vehicles per hour, which is just further evidence that we've done this or set it up correctly because our answer should be in vehicles per hour. All right, pretty good. Next up, is the rate at which vehicles arrive at the toll plaza at t equals one, increasing or decreasing. So we're looking for if the rate is increasing or decreasing, the rate is A of t, right? So um, this was our rate. We're looking for whether the rate is increasing or decreasing. I'm gonna find A prime and evaluate it at one. But again, it's a calculator question. So I need A prime of one. I'm not doing that by hand. Even if I did, I wouldn't know sine of 0.62 um, or cosine. So I just, I've stored the function um, and I found the derivative of that function at one. I got approximately 148.947, so I'm gonna write that down. That's greater than zero, and now I'm just gonna write up my solution. So I'm gonna say, since a prime of one is greater than zero, the rate at which vehicles arrive at the toll plaza, and then that rate is a of t, so I'm gonna say comma a of t. Um, I don't think you need that, because it's, you know, it is the rate, is increasing, increasing because greater than zero. So is increasing um, at t equals one. And then t equals one was 6 a.m. Never sure what they mean uh, when they say like, you know, but they didn't really ask us to give a context. They asked for a reason, but t equals one is like, you know, that's the math part. 6 a.m. is the real world part. So I thought I should throw it in. All right, let's take a look at the next part, which is a line forms whenever a of t is greater than or equal to 400. Okay, so it's not always greater than 400, so we're gonna have to figure that out. The number of vehicles in line at time t for a is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to four is given by n of t, which is the integral from a to t of a of x minus 400 dx, where a is the time when the line first begins to form. So the first time that we hit 400 cars is when is a, that's a value of a. To the nearest whole number, find the greatest number of vehicles in line at the toll plaza. In the time interval from A to 4, justify your answer. 
this to me sounds like a candidate's test problem. Um, and so that's basically how I'm going to choose to do it. We're looking for the absolute maximum on a closed interval. Candidate's test for sure. All right, so first of all, I need to know when A of T is greater than or equal to 400. So what I've done is I have graphed A of T. That picture is really small. Um, I can make it bigger, but then uh, it might obscure something later on. But you know what, I'll just do this. There we go. Okay, so that's a little bigger. Um, so A of T is first equal to 400 at uh, 1.46937. So what I've done is I've written A of T equals 400, gives T is approximately uh, 1.46937. Now I know there's another value. That value is going to come into play in a second, but not right now. Um, and I'm going to say this is A because that's the first time, right? So I'm setting that equal to A. Now, I want to use a candidate's test. To use the candidate's test, I need N to be continuous. Um, so I'm going to write up how I set up the candidate's test every time. N is continuous. I'm not going to justify that because uh, A is continuous on the interval. And so N is differentiable and differentiability implies continuity. There's, I think, no way they wanted you to go through all those hoops on this. So I'm just going to say N of T is continuous. Therefore, the absolute maximum is either at an end point or at a critical point. So the end points are A and 4. Now we're going to need critical points. And it's not like immediately obvious. So I think that we should show how we're getting the critical points. So I'm going to say that N prime of T is A of T minus 400, second fundamental theorem, uh, equals 0. And then I need to know when that happens. Well, that happens. So I, I wasn't thinking when I did the problem. That's obviously going to happen at uh, 1.46937 and at 3.59771, but I accident well, not accidentally, I just did it again. Um, and this, again, is really small. Let me beef this up a little bit. Okay, so um, 3.5977 is the critical point on the interval. So I said T is approximately 3.59771. And I'm setting that equal to P because I don't want to write that number again. Okay, so after I did that, what I'm going to do is make a table of values for the function n. And I need to evaluate at the endpoints, which are a and 4, and at this critical point, which I've called P. So my table looks like this. It's just T and then n of T. The values I want are at a, P, and 4. And then I use the calculator to get those values. So because I had already named the function a, the calculator wouldn't let me store the value as a. So I just stored it as a1. So that's why I've defined n of t to be the integral from a1 to t of a of x minus 400. And uh, you can see that I got 0, I got 71, and I got 62 because the question is to the nearest, um, to the nearest whole number. So 71 is our maximum, so let's write that up. Therefore, the max number of vehicles on A to 4 is 71 vehicles. So we have used the candidate's test. I didn't say by candidate's test. You don't usually need to name it. Perhaps I should have said uh, by candidate's test, the absolute max is at the end point or the critical point. That'd be a better answer, um, but it's not what I did. All right, so that was number one from uh, 2022. I hope this was helpful and good luck.